Christianity versus Islam. All right, so in this video, I'm just gonna kind of quickly kind of compare Christianity and um, Islam. So, you know, these are two very influential uh, religions. These are two very, very, very influential religions. Uh, uh, I don't need to give you an inter introduction to Islam and Christianity, because these are very, um, very, very influential religions. These are world religions. These are global religions, and these are religions that have nearly touched the entire world by Christianity and Islam. All right, so, okay. So, all right, what, all right, so what about this, all right? So, you know, which one is better? Which one is um, more authentic, more trustworthy, more um, reliable, or whatever? And, stuff. and, you know, to discuss this, to even begin to discuss this, right, you have to kind of, we have to kind of look at the, uh, the, the holy, uh, the holy texts, holy scriptures for both religions, right? So, you know, you know, you know the holy texts, holy scriptures for both religions, and right? for Christianity, you have the, uh, the Bible, right? And for Islam, you have the Quran. And of course, Judaism, Torah. And of course, yeah, you know, for in for Christianity, there's different um, versions of the Bible. And of course, yeah, there's the Catholic Bible, Protestant Bible, and other a number of other versions of the Bible, and for. Uh, and, you know, of course, there are, there could be some, like, different interpretations of the uh, Quran. But, you know, for the most part, there is, like, there is, a, as far as I'm concerned, there's, like, a, there's only one general translation of the Quran, right? With no added, added extra verses or scriptures or anything like that. You know, unlike the Bible, right? Because, you know, there's the Catholic Bible and the Protestant Bible, they both contain a different number of books included, right? You know? So, you know, all right. Where am I getting at, right? So, which which religion is more better, what more uh, trustworthy, more reliable? Right? And again, we have to look at the holy scriptures that both of these religions kind of um that both of these religions kind of uh, have the holy scriptures, you know, the Bible for Christianity, the Quran for uh, Islam, and right? so you know the Bible. You know, if you aren't really um if, if you aren't really um much of a scholar of the Bible, I would highly um, suggest you look up someone called Bart D. Ehrman because Bart D. Ehrman is quite a prolific scholar of uh, the Bible, I think specifically the New Testament or whatever, and he kind of, he kind of um, reads, he probably kind of read through it, through the Bible more than anyone, I think. And he's kind of, he's of the opinion that the Bible has been, is kind of corrupted, it's filled with contradictions and fabrications and other innumerable errors and this is kind of demonstrably true right? you can just kind of um, on youtube or google just search for bart d ehrman and you'll know what i'm talking about right he, he, he wrote a number of books on the bible you know the bible and stuff the bible and you know and if you went through his work you would be fully convinced that the bible is completely it's, been, it's completely nonsense. It's, it's, it's filled with contradictions. It's filled with fabrications, errors. You know, the Bible is nonsense. You know, the Bible is just nonsense. And of course, you might, a lot of you might, uh, might want to see like some more um, thorough evidence and stuff. But I'm just, I know, I'd highly advise you just to look up Bart E. Ehrman, go through his work and his research and his, um, and his analysis of the Bible and stuff. You would fully, after you go through his work, you'd be fully convinced that the Bible is just a bunch of nonsense. And, you know, Contradictions. There are contradictions in the Bible. This is so obvious. Oh, the Bible has contradictions in it. You know. You know. In the, in the, I know. I can just one type of contradiction I can quickly pull off the top of my head is uh, the fact that the in the Gospels, man, Jesus has two different genealogies in the Gospels. That's like super clear. It's the clearest 
contradiction you can pull out of the Bible, specifically in the Gospels and stuff, the New Testament. Of course, there are other contradictions, but you know, it's kind of it's going to be a mouthful to explain these other contradictions. And again, I would just highly refer you refer you to R.D. Ehrman's work because that you know he he completely annihilates a lot of the arguments for for the fact that the uh, you know the, the, the supposed fact that the Bible is infallible is without error. Right? This is nonsense. Again, go through Bart D. Ehrman's work. He's quite a uh, prolific scholar. And, you know, let's jump to the uh, Quran now. Of course, Islam kind of follows Christianity in a lot of different ways. Right? It's an Abraham, so, you know, supposedly it's an Abrahamic religion, which means that it, you know, it follows from you know a series of biblical prophets, and you know, of course, Abraham, which is found, who's like a prolific figure in both Christianity and Islam. So you know, Islam kind of follows Christianity in a lot of different ways. Right? You know. As far as I'm aware, right, there are, of course, there are some differences and stuff like this. But as far as I'm aware, right, you know, the, the Islam and, you know, the Bible, the Quran specifically, not the Bible, right, it's, you know, it's a lot more, um, I guess, without, it's not, it's not filled with, like, the Bible, the Quran doesn't really have any major contradictions. Of course, you could argue, well, there is some nonsense written in the Quran and stuff that contradicts modern scientific knowledge, of course, all right, maybe that might be true in some regards, right, but, the Quran doesn't really have any type of major um, contradictions that you could see as being very obvious. And in the in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, there are you know different two different genealogies for Jesus, and you can kind of go and go and research about this. And of course, I would highly refer you to um, Bart B. Ehrman's work on this as well, right? You know, the Bible is just completely so it's, it's just really it's a bunch of nonsense, right? Of course, and a lot of people say, well, why is Islam and the Quran much better? And, but, because, you know, in my opinion, the Quran doesn't really have any major obvious contradictions. Of course, you know, a lot of people could argue, well, there, are, there is some nonsense written in the Quran. And, right, that, you know, there's some stuff that contradicts modern scientific knowledge. And of course, if you believe this, I would, I would kind of encourage you to kind of at least reference me some work. And of course, a lot of people that are against Islam and the Quran, they also, a lot of them that aren't very intellectual, they would be like, Prophet Muhammad was a pedophile. That's why Islam is horrible and the Quran is atrocious. That's why Christianity and the Bible is just better because Muhammad was a pedophile and he abused a little girl and etc. and stuff. And this is just morally outrageous and whatever and stuff. And I can't even fathom about this because, you know, this is just horrible. Even though in the, even though you know, even though in the Bible there was a lot of there's more atrocious things. And you know that's kind of unfortunate. It's really unfortunate that some a lot of people are uh, this ignorant and stuff. They would kind of use ad hominem attacks. They wouldn't really kind of critique the more on the, the, the theological aspects of Islam. They would just rely on a series of ad hominem attacks, insults either to the Prophet himself or to you know the uh, to, you know to the Prophet Muhammad or to the you know to, just to, to, to Islam or to Middle Eastern people in general. Some people just hate Middle Eastern people. I don't know. <laughs> which is kind of funny, I don't know, it's kind of, it's funny though. <laughs> but you know, the, the Quran, you know, in Islam, if you're, if you're being intellectually honest, right, you wouldn't, like, I mean, there's, I don't think there's any type of prolific scholar of the Quran that's ever kind of showed that the Quran has contradictions. In the same way that the Bible has contradictions, right? And you know, this is something you should really, really consider, right, because if, the Bible has contradictions, and you know, how can you trust it? Right? The Quran doesn't have contradictions right? and stuff, of course. And of course, a lot of people would argue, well, there is some nonsense in the Quran that contradicts modern scientific knowledge. And of course, I don't know about this. You'd have to kind of refer me to this nonsense and stuff. You know, I'm not just, I'm not just pulling things from my backside. I've read both of these on books very, 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 very carefully. I think. I think I read through the Quran like, I don't know, dozens of different times and you know the Bible I think I read through from Genesis to Revelations at least over two times the Bible is very it's quite it's very tedious reading right? it's so much information in, in the Bible it's just, it would take you like almost a year to finish it I, you know I did it I read it through two times it's something I'm kind of you know you know what's very weird about the Bible you know in the Old Testament the biblical prophets they're very um you know concerned about like foreskins and circumcision you know King David I don't know, I don't want to mention any explicit details, but you should really kind of research about this. It's kind of, 
very disgusting what you can find in the um, Old Testament. You know, in the Quran, I don't think there's anything as this, this, this disgusting, right? Because, you know, in the Old Testament, the biblical prophets, King David, blah, 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 can go on and on. You know, they kind of, it's just a lot of disgusting things that you can find about them if you go carefully read through the, um, the, the Bible, specifically the Old Testament. And I don't know, that might change your mind on Christianity and stuff. You know, if I read through the Quran, you know, this is my opinion, right? But I believe that the Quran is just a lot more wholesome, you know, it's a lot more wholesome and stuff, in my opinion. I know, you you, 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 again, you might, you might, you, a lot of you guys might have misconceptions in your heads and stuff. And I would encourage you to read both, read through both, both religious texts and see for yourself, right? Because I read through both religious texts a lot of different times, right? So, you, know, you know, the Bible's quite disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Second Kings 2, 2, 4, or 3, you should research about that, right? That's pretty disgusting. You know, the Quran, it's a lot more wholesome. Of course, you might be, or you might be contentious, right? And I just kind of understand it, right? Because, you know, Islam is a very foreign religion, right? You know, historically, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of been, um, kind of seen as like a, an invasive religion from the Middle East, right? From a different part of the world that, you know, the West has been trying to kind of struggle against for a long time and stuff. So, you know, Islam is kind of, uh, shouldn't just be tolerated and stuff. And that's, this is like the mentality of a lot of different people and stuff. And of course, you know, like the history and stuff, you, like the politics of history, like you shouldn't really kind of, you shouldn't really let that kind of taint your thinking about which specific religion is more authentic and true, right? You know, because, you know, you know, Christianity has a very ugly history as well, right? You can just look at what the um, conquistadors in Spaniards did in South America. You can kind of research about the history of um, the conquistadors, the Spanish, Spaniard, Portuguese invasions of uh, South America. Now, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a very ugly side of, um, very ugly part of Christian, Christian history, Christianity and stuff. You should really consider this, right? You know, you know to get back to like what I was kind of really mainly talking about, right? You know. Christianity versus Islam, which religion is better? You know, the Bible has contradictions. Right? You, you, there's no argument here. Right? The Bible has contradictions. I'd refer you to uh, Bart B. Ehrman's work if you're, and if you might, if you want, if you might disagree, right? But the Bible has contradictions. That's not good enough. Right? The Quran, of course. A lot of people say, well, there's some nonsense. All right, fine, but you know. You know, if you if you really if you want to argue that the Quran has contradictions and errors and is filled with nonsense, you know, refer me to all of the uh, the all of the um the scholarly work proving this, right? Because you know, I, I mentioned Bart D. Ehrman, you know, the use against Christianity, right? But you know, I don't believe there's any type of scholar on his level you kind know, of you can kind of critique that that kind of um kind of provides compelling arguments against against Islam, Islam, the religion. And the, and the authenticity of the Quran, of course. A lot of people, they might disagree and stuff, it's kind of so right. But, you know, the Bible has contradictions. This is, there's no argument. Bart B. Ehrman referred to his work. The Bible has contradictions. You know. The Bible has contradictions as demonstrably true. Okay. No argument here. It's kind of funny as well that nobody really likes to think about this, right? <laughs> Especially a lot of Christians. They kind of they're just completely ignorant, right? And you know, you should just you, you, you need to like be intellectually honest. Right? You shouldn't just let the politics of history and your traditional background kind of blind you to the truth, because right? you know. Christianity, right? A lot of people in the Western world, they kind of, they feel closer to Christianity just because it's a part of the traditional background and history and, you know, it's politically correct, whatever. Christianity, not Islam, because that's not a part of our, like, um, customs and traditional stuff and history and whatever, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't let this blind you, right? If the Bible has contradictions, right? that's, you know, you shouldn't just tolerate that. You should kind of look to the other side and see what's there, right? Of course, you know, Islam, you know, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really trying to make it seem like Islam is just so much better than Christianity, right? You know, I, I, I'm kind of a little bit more agnostic on uh, Islam as well. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself like a, um, a Muslim, like in a very strong way. 
Because, you know, there are some, you know, if you read through the hadiths, there are some questionable things there. I mean, on the Quran overall, doesn't really have any major uh, contradictions. You know. You know, and of course, you know, the Bible does have contradictions. And stuff, you know, of course, the Bible has a, like, a lot of horrific things written in it. Right? Second Kings 2 2 4. Do, do some research on that. Pretty disgusting. So, um, not a lot to say, right? You know, it seem, I'm, I'm making it seem like, you know, Islam just is a lot better. So, you know, Islam is just, you know, there are some issues as well in Islam. And of course, you know, whether or not either whether whether or not either one of these religions are factually true, as in like you know, they're 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 true in the sense that you know their theology is true that there is like some sort of like the the, the, the deities that both religions profess to um kind of profess to exist. Right? The deities that both religions are revolve around. Right? Of course, I'm, I'm deities. I'm, I'm making it seem like the Abrahamic gods. Labor, that like there's like two different gods. There's the Islamic god and the Christian god, or the Christian god or the Islamic god. Of course. Both religions follow each other in a lot of different ways, right? The Abrahamic, they follow you know, Abraham, whatever. I don't want to get too much into the details. Kind of going on a rant now, but you know. Which, like, I mean, if the Bible has contradictions, that's not good enough, man. You shouldn't just kind of turn a blind eye to that, right? If the Bible has contradictions, contradictions and a bunch of different other problems related to, uh, related to its scriptures, right? The moral problems as well. Of course, morality is kind of subjective and stuff. I don't want to get into a debate about that, but, you know, but if you carefully analyze the Old Testament, you'll see that it's kind of atrocious. It's very, very atrocious. Right. Seriously, I would consider you, I would consider you to, uh, I would kind of really just tell you, like, you don't have to t just take my word for it. Read through um, the, the Bible and the Quran very, very carefully multiple different times and sit down and seriously read through both of these um, texts, religious scriptures, whatever and stuff, and you'll come to the same conclusion that I'm coming to, right? That, you know, I believe that, you know, Islam and the Quran is just a lot more um, wholesome, trustworthy, reliable compared to the, uh, to the Bible and the, um, compared to the Bible and Christianity, of course. It's very tricky, right? Because, you know, again, the Bible, there's different versions of the Bible, the Protestant Bible, the Catholic Bible, different number of books included and stuff, this is kind of very frustrating and stuff. But you gotta kind of, cons I guess, I don't know, just read through both holy scriptures, religious texts yourself, you'd kind of, you'd come to like sort of my realization, right, that Islam kind of is a lot more um, wholesome and, which seems kind of insane, right, because of, you know, this, misconception and stuff and uh, a bunch of different stereotypes it seems kind of insane right that you know islam and the quran will be more wholesome but you know if you just carefully investigate investigate and read through the bible and the quran you'd come to like this type of realization that i have um of course i'm not biased there you know i don't you know i don't strongly uh, push for uh, islam you know i'm not really i wouldn't call myself like a very strong believer right you know i'm a, I'm a muslim in like the strictest sense of you know you know, there are some questionable things in the Hadiths and stuff like this, and, you know, I don't want to get into that, you know, but if you read, if you carefully read through the Bible and the Quran a multitude of different times, right, you would kind of see what I'm, what I'm saying is true, right, that Christianity and the Bible is not, it's not reliable. There are contradictions in the Bible. And this is very, very obvious if you just kind of go through the scholarly references and work, especially I would highly refer you to a Bart Ehrman, it becomes very, very obvious that Christianity is just, really, it's just a bunch of nonsense. If you carefully investigate the Bible, it's just filled with atrocious things, right? A bunch of, it's just a bunch of insane things that were, I don't know, put together for some reason in the past, I don't know, and now we have it here in the modern age. Yeah, you know, you, know, you might disagree a lot because you know the politics of history, right? And of course, the traditional, the traditions and the culture, all differences and whatever, just kind of taints a lot of people's thinking. Most people aren't intellectually honest, and so they would just feel closer to Christianity or, I guess, Islam just because of their background, because just because of their history and just because of the politics of their country. Right? But, you know, if you're intellectually honest, right, I would highly refer you to um, the scholarly works of Barty Ehrman, right? Especially if you, if you somehow, if for whatever reason, you think that Christianity is just more 
wholesome and that I'd again highly refer you to the scholarly works of Art Ehrman. And so then I'd also refer you to um you know like to like to, to kind of like to kind of look at like a lot of the more atrocious things in the Old Testament as well, right? You know, you know there, there's a bunch of different uh, YouTube channels that kind of that show how atrocious the Old Testament is in the Bible specifically, right? You know, there's I forgot it's like this uh, guy. I don't know if his name was Dark Matter Two Five Two Five or something similar. I can't really pull it straight directly off the top of my head, but you know, you got to go on this guy's channel because right? he kind of he kind of dismantles Christianity. As well, right? you know, Christianity versus Islam, right? Of course, there's, you know, some people, there is some like subjective uh, subjectivity here, but you know, the Bible and Christianity, right? the, the, you know, specifically the Bible, right? It has contradictions, right? And there was a lot of scholarly work to back this up. Whereas, you know, the Islam, the Quran, the Quran doesn't really have any really major types of contradictions. And if you disagree, I would just refer me to the scholars and stuff.